I'm, this is a like a six some minute video, but we got to play it. Is is 191 overt acts, right? And let's say overt act, um, the rental of the infinity happens on June. Or that's wrong. January 7th of 2015. That's the only overt act that's proven. Every other 190 are not proven. There would not be a conspiracy because the overt act is not within five years. So my point is, I understand that the conspiracy allegedly continues and the state of Georgia can put in, if the court permits, different um, examples of predicate acts and overt acts. And do you agree that they can put in for consideration your argument? Yeah. Term for, um, that includes 190 overt acts on the... So I'm not hearing that he's this, asking that. This is that. what's important right here. 190, that there's a form for um, that includes 190 over acts on the verdict form because, and this is the reason I'm asking about that, because any over, any relevant information or evidence that is permitted at trial right. that constitutes an over act. The overt act does not have to be alleged on the indictment, and we certainly don't. It, that list that is contained within count one has never been represented as an exhaustive list of overt acts. And the overt acts that we introduce at trial mm -hmm. don't have to be included in count one. And if the jury finds... I mean, I understand what Mr. Steele is saying, and I'm not arguing with that last summation that the court gave. But my point is that I understood him to be saying something akin to, I want a special verdict form that includes the, the over acts that are listed on the indictment. And I want them to say if they found this one, this one, this one. And if the ones that they find occurred prior to five years um, before the indictment, then they cannot find the defendant guilty of that count one if only the ones they find occurred five right. years more than five years prior right That's then they I can't find them okay do y'all do y'all people what they said right there because um i feel like it wasn't a whole lot of discussion about that last week but um, I talked about it a little bit, but did y'all understand what they were saying right there now that's not the important part I just want to make sure everybody caught what they said and Brian still established this as part of this Rico statute right the acts, the overt acts that the jury ends up finding the defendants guilty of must have happened within five years of the date of the indictment. The indictment was like uh, some like May 2022. So that means if they find them guilty, it will have to be from something that happened from like May 2017 up to May 2022. So. All of that Donovan Thomas stuff, all of that, none of that stuff is going to be able to be the sole reason that they're convicted for this. So the state is trying to say, all right, look, they did all of these things going back to 2012, right? We're going to show you all of these things. Now, here's these newer items that happened. And that's why they're trying to go into the stuff that happened in jail. That's why they want to go into the, um, the drinks murder. That's why they want to go into Young Thug and Gunner being pulled over with a gun in the car with the people behind them with all the guns and the snipers and the shooters and all that. That's why they want to get that stuff in. They want to use these newer items, these newer like, not minor, but these newer items to try to use that to round up and wrap up all of the stuff that happened back before the five-year statute. Because it's not, a, it's not specifically statute of limitations. It's the statute of this Rico situation because like the murder, the Donovan Thomas murder, they could prosecute that forever, but they couldn't prosecute that solely and make that the sole reason that they convict these people of a Rico because it's outside of that five year window. You see what I'm saying? So yes, the jury could be like, okay, yes, that person is guilty. Let's just say like this, right? Let's say they don't find them guilty of anything else except killing nut, right? then they won't be able to be convicted for it because that didn't happen within the five-year window. You see what I'm saying? That's what Brian Steele's argument is. It's about the overt acts that are used to convict. Now, of course, everything can be, everything can be considered 
All of these overt acts can be considered, but they can't be used as the sole reason for convicting of this count one unless they happen within five years of the indictment. OK, again, but that's not that's not the important part, though. Let me go. Let me keep going. That's not the important part that I, not that that's not important. That's not what I came here for. Yes. So we, if, we're all on the same page then. So as long as we're not talking about listing out the 191. Because oh, we if, might be talking about listing out the 191, because how can I know whether they found one within the statute unless they say yes or no as to each of them? Well, they could list, they could state, they don't have to, I would, the reason that I would object to putting 191 is that it would limit them to consideration of 191. And if evidence of one that happened, for instance, during the course of this trial yeah. is not on the indictment. It's not. And they can't be, they can, I mean, we haven't gotten to that, but I would think they can consider that potentially. But if the only thing they find is an overt act is something that occurred post indictment in the jail, and that's the only thing they find, they can't be convicted because oh, you yes. haven't indicted them for that. Oh, Your Honor, yes, you you can, and I will get that case law for the court. Okay. Now, remember, you heard what Love just said. Oh, Your Honor, yes, you can, and I'll get that case law for the court. It's, this was last week. We have a full week that just passed and she still has not gotten a case law. And actually, contrary, Brian still has gotten case law from two months ago. No, 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 no. I'm lying. I'm lying. Wait, yeah. Harding. Harding versus United States. We just read that. That was two months ago. Brian still has case recent law, recent case law to say exactly the opposite of what Miss Love is saying. And Ms. Love still hasn't given over that case law. But let's keep going because that wasn't the important part either. Well, but I'll definitely be can. interested in seeing how they can get convicted of something they weren't indicted for. But OK, they were, I have they so were, much exciting case law to look forward to. Yes, Your Honor, the court does. They were indicted for conspiracy Sassy. to commit uh, to violate the Georgia Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. The over act, that's count one. The over acts that are listed in the indictment. Are, have it's said so, okay they were they were indicted for conspiracy and for cons a and b no they were indicted for conspiracy okay and so all the jury needs to find after they find that there's an inter this is the part right here pay close attention this is it right what i came here for this is it surprise that there's conspiracy that people participated in only one person has to commit one over act for the jury to find them guilty of count one. And not by them, I mean all right. of the people that they it's determined they were, were part of the, the enterprise. Conspiracy. Right. So the, if they find and believe that during the course of this trial, an act that is considered that can constitute an over act was committed by either one of the defendants, then they have what the law requires to convict each of the defendants that they find participated in or conducted this conspiracy guilty of count one. So the notion that you enumerate one through 90, one through 191 mm -hmm. over acts and that you limit the jury's consideration to whether or not the over act that they find the one person committed is within these 191 acts is not an accurate um statement All right, well give me the law on that that really wasn't what i was trying to address anyway what i was trying okay they find and believe that during the course of this trial an act that is considered that can constitute an over act was committed by either one of the defendants then they have what the law requires to convict each of the defendants that they find participated in or conducted this conspiracy guilty of count one. So the it's said, so, okay, they were, they were indicted for conspiracy and for cons uh, A and B. No, they were indicted for conspiracy. Okay. And so all the jury needs to find after they find that there's an enterprise, that there's conspiracy, that people participated in it, only one person has to commit one over act for the jury to find them guilty of count one. And not by them, I mean all right. of the people that they it determined were, were part of the, the enterprise. Now, 
That's the important part right there. And this is why I said that that immune hold on. This is why I said that forced immunity deal and telling Woody repeatedly, hey, you can admit to anything up here. It won't be used against you. This is why that was a trick. You heard what Love just said. Anybody that is determined to be a part of this enterprise, that means indicted or not indicted, anybody determined to be a part of this enterprise, if the, if the jury finds that there is an enterprise and a gang, pretty much an organization does exist and it falls under this conspiracy thing, they only need one of them to have committed one of these overt acts, some indicted, some not indicted, for everybody to be found guilty of count one, the RICO count. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Did y'all hear what I'm trying to say? They only need one person that is considered to be part of YSL that is indicted or not indicted. That includes Woody. They only need one person to have been shown to commit one of these overt acts, of course, within that five year window. One of them commit the overt act for you to convict everybody who is considered to be part of that organization. Because what they really want is that count one, the Rico count. That's the one they want to get everybody on. So, no, I'm not a lawyer. Who are you talking about, me? I'm not a lawyer. That's what Love is saying, and that's what she's trying to get off. She's saying that if one person is guilty of, of um, committing one of these overt acts, then everybody who they say is a part of this organization can be found guilty of count one which is conspiracy. That's what she's saying. So she's not saying, like, let's just say like this. She's not saying that if Woody killed Nut, then all of them are convicted of killing Nut. No, she's saying if Woody killed Nut and Woody killed Nut as some part of this conspiracy, that means everybody in the conspiracy, no matter what part they played, can be found guilty. Not No, they're saying can be found guilty. Everybody that's part of this organization can be found guilty of the uh, one, the Rico count, count one, the Rico count. That's what love is trying to say right there. And I think that that kind of, I think that threw the st the defense off a little bit based on how they argued after that, because they came up kind of said like, what, what, what? like that's when the argument started to be about things that happened after, um, after the, the, the indictment stuff. Right. So I think that uh, that's what I meant about it's really looking ugly because Woody has to be careful at what he admits to up there. Now, he admitted to the barbershop shooting, which I don't know why he did, but he admitted to it. However, that happened before the five year window. Right. So what they what, what Woody just has to do. And that's why I said, if y'all want y'all want to save these people, tell Woody to come look at this video and go to an hour and go to an hour and 15 minutes and start watching from there. Woody can't it now we know that Woody was in prison from uh sept, from um he was locked up from like June 2015 up until like Woody said he got he did five years so he did 51 months or whatever like that for possession of a firearm by a felon so he was off the board from 2015 to 2019 right so as long as he don't admit to doing nothing from 2017 to 2022 I, they should be good now they also need to Make sure that nobody else admits to doing anything else in that window. Like I said, if the Donovan Thomas murder is the only thing that they end up proving, which they haven't proved that at all, and they probably won't prove it. If that's the only thing that they get, that does not fall in this window and they won't be convicted of that count. They can't be convicted based on just that. Right. And the judge told her we are going to have to uh, itemize every single one of these overt acts because we need to make sure that whatever one the jury says they're guilty of falls within the statute falls within the window of the statute, which is five years, right? So the, no, they haven't proven Woody is YSL. The problem is it's not even about if Woody did. It's, I mean, if they prove that Woody is, it's about, does the jury believe that Woody is part of, it's all about what the jury believes. That's what all of this is about. So if the jury, let's just say like, if they find out, okay, that one of these YSL members or one of these members of this organization 
committed a shooting in 2018, right? That falls within the window. Then they also have to say, okay, we see that this member committed this shooting. Who was he acting in concert with? Also, who else is YSL in here? Now we got to determine who's YSL the gang. They could determine Young Thug started a rap career and then some guys in the street decided to start a gang around Thug's rap career and Thug wasn't involved in the street part. They could decide that. Who knows? But I'm just saying there's two things that they have to decide. They have to decide which overt act these people were part of. And they also have to determine, I'm talking about the jury, they have to determine which overt act each person was involved with. And then they also have to decide who is YSL, the criminal street gang, who's in it, right? They might end up saying Woody wasn't even in it. Woody is 30 deep. Woody is 732. They might say Woody was an affiliate, but he wasn't in it. So they might take, so the jury might say, okay, all of the crimes that Woody committed, we're not going to consider that with the YSL stuff. They might look at Shannon Stillwell and say he was also a 30 deep member. He was clearly a G-Shine member. So you know what? All of his crimes, we're going to not associate with YSL. They could, the, the jury could itemize it like that. The jury could argue with each other about that. They could say these people were criminals. These people were in street gangs, but the street gang wasn't YSL. They were in these other gangs. I think that jail call with Shannon Stillwell with the G-Shine dudes proves that. The problem is, is the jury going to understand the difference between G-Shine and and YSL, do they even know what that means? A lot of people don't, right? So the that's that's some of the stuff that's that is is extremely complicated to figure out. It's it's complicated clearly for these lawyers to make their arguments. Imagine you have no idea of the law, you didn't go to school for law, you haven't been practicing law for 20, 30 years, and it's on you to determine whether or not these you have to interpret the judge is going to interpret the law for you and explain it to the jury. But you have to understand what the judge is talking about. And then you have to go back in a room full of members of the jury. And y'all are going to have to talk it out to figure out who did what and who's associated with what, who's a member of what. Is this thing really that? Who did it and when they did it? That's a tough job for a jury like this. Yeah, G-Shine and Sex Money Murder, two different groups. So that's what I'm saying about Shannon Stillwell is even in a gang that wasn't even the gang that they were saying Young Thug was in, which they were saying him, DK, uh, Trontavia Stevens, pretty much the people who was in the rock crew early days or whatever, is supposedly Sex Money Murder affiliated. These guys that they got affiliated with, these 30 Deep guys, were supposedly G-Shine affiliated. You know what I'm saying? So, And, you know, you could be from a big neighborhood like... like um. Woody is from Mechanicsville, which is a big area, like neighborhood area type of thing in Atlanta. So it's probably plenty of different type of gang affiliations in that area. So the jury has a tough job ahead of them. I say that after looking at this week and after these calls and all this type of stuff, YSL has to do whatever they could do. They need a mistrial. This is not one that you want because it's too tricky. You, I feel like the jury is being confused right now. I think the state is purposely confusing them. And I think it's too, it's too up in the air like as to this interpretation of these laws. It's very, very, very vague, I feel. It's just like the RICO, the RICO is just like all over the place. It's like, oh, yeah, they, I mean, this person knew this person. They keep on saying why sell associates and then they saying why sell members. It's like y'all about to convict me based on something an associate did. And they not even on this trial. You understand what I'm saying? 